guys, it's your girl Blessed with Faith today with another YouTube video. And today I'm just going to be talking to you guys straight up, point, period. One thing that's been on my mind is how do I keep myself from falling from sin? Like, how do I do it? And I was in reading my Bible and I've been praying about it and... This is kind of, this is what I saw. Have an urge to sin. I still am tempted. I still do things that God wouldn't be proud of me. Every once in a while, I just fail. And I'm like, God still loves me. And also, like, how do I keep myself from falling from sin? Like, how do I do it? And... I was in reading my Bible and I've been praying about it and this is kind of this is what I've saw chapter 7 verse 21 to 25 so I find the law at work although I want to do good evil is right there with me for in my inner being I delight in God's law but I see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me then here's the part where it explains why there's always, like, temptation. What a wretch man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I am myself in my mind. I am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Then after, like, what kind of stuck out to me was um, Romans 8, uh, verses 3 through 6. For the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he was condemned, sinned in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. We met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live in according to the flesh have the mindset on the flesh desires, but those who live according to the spirit have their mindset on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. That really resonated with me because it's like, it's the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is supposed to guide us to, and how we live and when i got to sixth grade i transferred i went to another school and that school there was a girl from my church there and um there was another student who literally like they were just being so rude and they were testing my patience and i was this close to cussing them out this close <laughs> and what had happened was um, the girl was like, oh, no, she's Christian. Don't talk to her like that. And it hit me for the first time that I represent Christians or specifically I represent God's child. So I must live like that. Even though I love God and all this, I must live according to the fact that I love God. Um, and, you know, now that I'm older, I'm realizing that me living according to the way that God wants me to live is living and worshiping God. So, yeah, it's important to worship God, right? Because when you worship God, you can be led by the Spirit. So... We have to love God and we have to love God, not just, not just, just, just say, oh yeah, I love him in my mind, but we have to live as if we love God. So like, imagine, I'm going to talk about my own self in this circumstance. Like, I know that I personally, I love my dad, but one thing that I struggle with is I've never really said to my dad, like, I genuinely love you. And... Maybe, personally, I've just been thinking about maybe 
he doesn't really understand how much I love him because I never express it. And maybe he knows it's there, but it's like he doesn't understand the, the depth of how I love him. Because I don't live... Or I don't tell him how I love him. I mean, you don't have to always say, I love you, I love you, I love you. But maybe it's the way you live. Like, okay. The way that I'm living, I'm telling you I love you. The way that I'm communicating, the way that I... When I go out the doors of my household, and I am representing my parents. So, vice versa, with God. You know, I'm in college now, so I do what I want. That's all. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> as when I represent my parents, I also am representing my father up in heaven, God. I represent God. So what I do is worship. And whether we like it or not, we all worship naturally like we find someone that we admire we appreciate music we love like we worship we praise something or someone so we might as well praise god with how we carry ourselves with how we like what we listen to like not that you know we're all, all gospel but i like it's important to take that time to let god know that we love him so when we let god know when we worship we are we can also be led by the spirit when we spend time with him more when we dedicate our life to him where we can be guided in direction to be the holy spirit to, to enter our lives but when we do whatever we want when we do we allow our fresh desires to just kind of take hold of what it is that we want to do that void of kind of feeling empty or that void of just feeling like maybe I'm not good enough. Like, I'm not loved. Maybe I'm... Like, all those emotions that happen when sin takes over. I mean, like it said, like the result of death. Um, I feel like... I don't know if this happens to you, but every once in a while I might see someone... And I just feel like even though they're living, they're dead. And it hurts to see that. Like, I've been through some painful things in my life. And I, I hope to share it with YouTube um, when the time is right. But sometimes we allow pain to affect us so much that we fall into sin. Sin that just controls us to the point where it's like, it's actually killing us inside. And I'm here to say that God is peace. Like, God generally wants the best for us. He generally loves us so much. And if we just allow, we just express our love for him. We just give him that time. We give him that time to pray. We give him that time to worship. We give him that time to just, just hear what the word of god has to say oh, man it is amazing and you know what god loves us so much and just who he is alone is amazing and i just appreciate just being able to do this youtube video and just being able to just know how good god is like god has been so good i should not be here with you guys today um but because of god because of who he is i'm here I guess just getting in a little more, um, when I was in elementary school, I had a couple of counters where I shouldn't be here today. Um, in fifth grade, I had carbon monoxide poisoning. There was gaps escaped in my house, and I was the first one affected. Um, I wasn't able to move. I wasn't able to eat and I mean thank God like, I had school so I didn't die obviously I'm here but I had school so when I would go to school I just feel so sick I feel so weak um, I felt more capable of eating but when 
I was home. I, we couldn't figure out what was going on. They thought that I had a virus. Went to the doctor. I felt dizzy. I felt nauseous. I just felt horrible. And when we finally figured out what it was, the doctor told me that I wasn't going to live. Like, like you may not live tonight. Like, that was the first time it hit me that, like, death is, a, like, like that's something that, that's, like, it could happen to me sooner than what I thought. Um, and, honestly, that's also another time where I got close to God. Sometimes I feel like when we're at our weakest point, and we have nowhere to go, we just get really close to God. And I love God and stuff like that, but it hit me that, and sometimes he's all, all we ever really need, all we ever, everything we need, God has, and he can provide for us. Um, they also, the same year, um, I experienced an encounter where um, I was being abused and I was at a point where a woman had her hands around my neck and I'm in elementary school, so this was hard. It was really hard. And it hit me that that could have been my last time on earth. Her hands were on my neck. Um, her knee was on my stomach. And her other leg was around me to the point where I couldn't really get out. And I would, she was a lot stronger than me because she was a woman and I'm a fifth grader so I'm kind of small and skinny during that time because I also just had carbon monoxide poisoning so I'm not the most physically fit um but I know that that wasn't her that caused her to do that to me um it was that was the tough moment there I was I, I literally had no choice but to pray and I was just like father God like forgive us for our like just forgive me and forgive her father God for all our sins father God like I love you and like basically like just like I literally just started praying and I, I started I wasn't able to breathe and it's like the craziest thing is like at that moment she was just literally off of me um there was a lot of blood on the floor and I was able to get away but the craziest thing is even when we don't deserve it it's like God was there he was there even when I had carbon monoxide but people don't live from that that is gas into my lungs People don't live from being, like, strangled. And especially being a child, you're more delicate. And I really didn't think that I was, like, that same year, I was like, I don't really think I'm going to make it to, like, 12. Like, I accepted the fact, like, I, at that, that time in my life, I was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. Um, I was, I skipped school for the first time in fifth grade. I was I was a sailor like I swore all the time like I honestly even though I love God I didn't give myself to God and a lot of people say like it's a day where you just get saved but I really think that for me it was a process of really realizing how like good God it was for me and then I gave it to God and there are things that I do struggle with to this day like I I'm being very open and transparent I can be a little boy crazy like you can ask my closest friends I can I can be boy crazy so I'm still dealing with you know things that I struggle with personally but I did notice that I do see how good God is for me 
and I'm praying for God to like help me just to focus on him and um, that void for just knowing that I can be free from being boy crazy and I know that I can because my father in heaven doesn't want me to be a slave to anything um so um, most recently I deleted um all my little dating website I apps um and I'm trying to just when I have those feelings of wanting to to have someone just pray or that desire to just not be alone and honestly like it's not easy being single, especially when, you know, I for me, I was in a relationship for five years. So just being single for it just it feels it feels like a whole nother structure of living for me. Um, but I think it's a good one. And I appreciate the process that God is putting me into to become the woman that God wants me to be. Um, and I feel like when the time's right, the right guy will come around. Hope you can get some. Okay. And um, till then, um, I just, um, thank you guys for listening. Um, being open and transparent. Hopefully something that I said um, really stuck out to you guys. Love you guys with the love of the Lord. Please, please hit that like and subscribe button, whatever way it is. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.